there. Welcome to 2010 2. 20 minutes and 10 bucks will make a fantastic meal for two. Today we're going to make a frittata. A frittata is essentially an Italian omelet. Ours is going to be asparagus and ham with some others. Now, neat thing about asparagus. Did you know this? That asparagus will tell you where it should break. It just automatically breaks itself when you bend it. And then you just want to cut it up. Now the other thing is when you're cutting fresh vegetables, you want to do it on an angle so that more of it is open for uh, the flavor to be released. So we'll just put that in there. Now, a frittata always starts on the stove top. Now this is a stick-free pan, but I like to be sure. So I just put, a, just attach, and I mean attach of olive oil in there, and then I use my handy dandy pastry brush and I just spread it around so that I know there's a little extra uh, oil there to lubricate things. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cook our onions. Onions have been a health food for generations. I like to add a little bit of flavoring. And so I'm using... I'm using uh, Smart Balance. Doesn't matter. You could use butter. You don't need to use it. Some, some of the pure recipes don't. But I want to cook up these onions. Now I love onions and they are so good for us. There are some studies that are showing countries that use a lot of onion in their cuisine have less stomach cancer than other countries, which I think is kind of interesting. Now, when you're cooking onions, what's important is to cook them down until they become translucent, so you can actually see through them. And, oh, that smells good. Now, while I'm cooking my onions, I also like to add garlic. Garlic is from the same family, the lily family, as onion, also known for its health benefits. And I've chopped up about three cloves, good sized cloves. So I'm going to put those right in there. Now, frittata, I call it an Italian omelet. It's really not an omelet because, you know, an omelet is folded. A frittata is also similar to a quiche. The quiche, nine times out of ten, have a crust, and a frittata doesn't. What's nice about a frittata, whoops, get that right back in there. What's nice about a frittata is that it can be made with a multitude of ingredients. So that every time you make it, it can be different. The other thing, cool thing about a frittata, especially if you're both working, or, is that it is fast and easy to make. You know, too often come home from work and tired and just don't feel like making a meal that takes an hour to do. So you can make a healthy meal very quickly. Now these, if you look You'll see they're starting to soften up, and they're starting to get a little uh, translucent. So now I'm going to add about a half of a red pepper, sweet red pepper. I put that in for two reasons. Number one, I like the flavor of red peppers. Peppers are good for it. And the other is it adds a little color. Okay, and we continue to cook this down. We won't add the ham and the asparagus to right towards the end because they don't take as long to cook. Ham's already cooked. 
Now you notice I haven't put any herbs in. Those will go uh, last. Now, another difference between an omelet and a frittata is that an omelet, the egg part is goes in first, and then the ingredients are added secondly. In a frittata, the ingredients are cooked first in the pan, the same pan where you're going to put the egg mixture, and they are often layered on top of each other. All right, this is looking pretty good. Those onions are softening right up and starting to get more and more translucent. So at this point, I'm now going to put up put the ham. It's probably, um, oh, it's a small ham steak that I have chopped up. You could use deli ham, uh, you could use leftover uh, lamb shoulder, you know, uh, pork shoulder, anything you like. Now, I'm using large quantities because I like to make a hearty frittata. You don't need to use all of this. Uh, if you want more of the egg and cheese mixture. Now I'm going to put the chopped up fresh asparagus in there. Because that needs to soften up too. Uh, we haven't pre-cooked it. And I'm mixing it so that all the flavors will blend. And so you also get the pretty green and red, the green of the asparagus and the kind of the pink of the ham and the red of the uh, red pepper and then a little bit of um, the white. Now I'm just going to let that cook a little bit while I get the egg mixture ready. And you saw it's at the farm store and I've already got three eggs. Look at the color. Aren't they gorgeous? Now I'm going to add Another one of those blue eggs. It looks like it's been dyed, but it's from those special hens. So I'm going to crack it in there. Now, traditional recipes often just have eggs, but you can make it go a little further by adding some kind of dairy product, like milk or half and half. I happen to have whipping cream that I need to finish. So I'm going to put some of that in. Some people put water in. They say it makes it fluffier. And at this point, I'm going to add, oh, I don't know, about 10 whirls on the pepper mill. And I'm, <coughs> excuse me, going to whip this up. Now the other difference between a frittata and an omelet is that omelets are the egg mixture is often just stirred but with a frittata look at that how lemony yellow that's getting uh, with a frittata you want to whip it up to get the air in with the eggs and what that does is um, helps you have a fluffier custard on top so I'm going to mix that right up and I'm looking over, I'm not losing track of what's going on um, in the pan. I certainly don't want um, to have a crisis over here. So I'm just going to, oh, it smells so good. Look at all that. It's going to be a very hearty dinner on this winter's night. So I'm going to put that in there, and I think I'm now going to add the cheese. I've grated up some Havarti. You could use Parmesan, you could use Swiss, you can use any kind of cheese you want. You have to make a decision. Some cheeses are stronger than others. Do you want to get your extra flavor from your cheese or from your herbs? Tonight I'm choosing to go with a milder cheese and I'm going to go heavy on the herbs. But it might be that you wanted to put uh, some Havarti and some uh, blue cheese in. Now think, the blue cheese would give it an extra little tang. You just got to experiment. Cooking should be fun. So I put this on, just spread it out, and I'm not going to wait for it to melt or anything. Now you don't need a lot. I'm probably using mm, about a half a cup. Most recipes for frittata call between a, a half a cup 
and a full cup. Your choice. I'm going to do another little twirl of the eggs to make sure they're really ready to go. And then I'm going to bring this over here and I'm just going to pour my egg mixture over all my vegetables. And I'm going to make sure that it spreads out so that everything is uniformly covered. You can see it's already starting to cook down. Now, this is when I want to put my herbs on. Now, fortunately, I can still get fresh parsley. So I'm just going to, I've just got a couple of sprigs here, and I'm just going to chop it up. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the stems. I don't think that really adds to the flavor. But I'm going to chop it up. If you don't have fresh parsley, you can use dried parsley, and I'm just going to spread it out around. Now, because this is an Italian dish, or my version of an Italian dish, I'm going to use some basil. Mmm, I love basil. Probably start with about a teaspoon. And again, I'm going to spread it all around evenly. Some on the stove to keep things interesting. And again, because it's Italian dish, I'm going to use some oregano. Again, dried oregano and fairly liberal, a couple of good shakes. So what I have happening now is everything is starting to cook up. Now you notice it's starting to get hard over here. Well, if I pull that up and then tip it, then you can see how the egg that hasn't started to cook yet goes right there and it will start to cook. Okay, and the same over here. I just tip it a little so that that part of the egg that is still running is going. All right. And in about another minute, I'm going to put it in the oven. The oven is a very hot oven of 450 degrees. And it should take about four minutes, five minutes to finish cooking. Okay, so the way you know is you can see that it's sort of, it is cooked along the sides there. So now it's time to put it in the oven. And again, I have an oven-proof fry pan. That's important. I'm going to put it right here. And while that's cooking up, I'm going to be thinking about the salad. And it seems, as I mentioned before, pears are in season somewhere in the world. And in the grocery store, you can get some that are really in pretty good ripeness. So what I'm going to do, because I want to warm these up, I am just going to put these big slices, I'll slice them up smaller, in this pan and I'm going to put it right in the oven. And I'm keeping an eye. The frittata is looking good, not done yet. And then I'm going to begin thinking about plating the whole meal. So I'm just going to put a nice handful of greens right there that I will put the pears on when they come out. And I'm going to make my own dressing today. Now you can just go to your refrigerator, pick out what you have. That's okay. But if you're feeling a little adventuresome, well then get out the olive oil and some nice balsamic vinegar, vinegar and you're going to do the proportions one to one. So I'm simply going to put in about a tablespoon. Well, that's probably less than a tablespoon. And then the same amount 
of balsamic vinegar. And I'm going to mix them up. Now fortunately, I have the stem of my asparagus here. Now you'll notice that I wasn't thinking and I put it in too small a dish. Well, so what? Nobody's looking as Julie Child said, so I'm just going to pour it into a bigger one and stir it around. Now with this, I might decide that I want to give it a little more flavoring. So I might put garlic in, I might put a little mustard, I might put a little black pepper. Now you notice I didn't use any salt today at all. And the reason I didn't do that was because ham is salty. And I don't like things really salty, so I figured the ham is going to do uh, all the salting that I need. Alright, so we've got that nice and mixed up, and what that's going to do is just be drizzled over the greens and the pears. Let's go see how the frittata is doing. Do you know how to check if an egg, egg dish is ready? You just need a regular dinner knife and you stick it in the middle and if it comes out without a lot of runny egg on it then you know it's done. So let's see. Fortunately it steamed up my glasses. Oh look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm just putting that right in there. Do you notice? There's not a lot of runny eggs, so I think it's done. So let's take this right out, put it right up here, and go back in and get those pears. Here's my dish. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to take out one of these nicely warm pears. Get rid of that. And I'm simply going to slice it up in these strips. And then I'm simply going to put them on the greens. Isn't that beautiful? The red, whoops, oh that's alright. The red and the white against the green. Then I'm simply going to take a very little of the dressing and dribble it over. Somebody else might like more. You got to decide. And let's go in and see how this frittata came out. So we'll go. Remembering also to use the appropriate utensil so you're not scratching. Make sure. And we'll sort of loosen it. And I don't want to grab the hot side of the pan. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The red and the ham and the green. Doesn't that look just delicious? So we're going to stick it right here next to the greens. And if you have some bread, a glass of white wine, you have a fabulous, fabulous dinner for two in 20 minutes for about 10 bucks. That's probably less than 10 bucks because you're going to have some for lunch or breakfast or dinner tomorrow. Thanks for dropping by. See you next time.